Hi there and welcome to Pierced Off, the counter-apologetic segment for Skeptical Podcast. My name is Jonathan M. S. Pierce and this week I'm going to talk to you a little bit about evolution due to the fact that obviously the last Skeptical Podcast was at Charles Darwin's own house. So I thought it would be apt to follow that theme on. And I want to look a little bit today at Alvin Plantinga's argument, evolutionary argument against naturalism. It's an argument that he posited that sought to unpick naturalism or or take the rug from under naturalism's feet to show that it was in some way self-contradictory, that it didn't make sense with itself. Now, the argument to me is is kind of building on C.S. Lewis's argument from reason, which sort of looks at the idea of naturalism qua determinism to some degree as being irrational it doesn't have you know in such a universe you just can't have rationality and the evolutionary argument against naturalism from planting is pretty much the same kind of of argument so i'm going to give you a very simplified version of planting argument which follows if naturalistic evolution is true our cognitive faculties are not reliable but our cognitive faculties are reliable therefore it follows as a matter of logic that naturalistic evolution is not true so as I say it's a really simplified version it's kind of a a double negation so it says that naturalism and evolution do not cohere with reliable cognitive faculties so I, I want to look at just I'm going to split this into two parts and this this week's area will be looking at this idea that our cognitive faculties are reliable so it's sort of this, the second part of that argument and it's kind of a weaker refutation of planting his argument because actually he doesn't have to fully subscribe to what I say but I'll talk about that a, a little bit as we go along so the idea here is that it's evident that uh, human cognitive faculties are reliable and I would just like to have a go at this premise that in fact our faculties aren't particularly re- or not greatly reliable in fact there are many many instances of them being not reliable and of course if that's the case then does that play into a theistic hand or in, into an atheistic hand or naturalistic hand so There are, I don't know, something like 60-odd cognitive biases that humans have, psychologically speaking, you know, whether it's confirmation bias, whether it's perseverance interrupt bias, all these different types of biases that we have that mean that we're up against it to actually come to an informed, rational conclusion when evaluating evidence, when when in arguments, uh, so on and so forth. So we are really at the mercy of cognitive biases so we are inherently it seems psychological and emotional creatures which means that we are victim to the mechanisms or the the unreliable mechanisms which such creatures have so I don't think it is particularly self-evident that we are hugely reliable creatures. Having said that, of course, we are sufficiently reliable in order to get us through life. And we are successful creatures. So at some point, you have to say, well, actually, we are fairly reliable. But of course, there's this kind of slippery slope here of all what is defined by reliable. How can we definitely define Is this some kind of fuzzy logic? You know, when does a sand dune become a sand dune after how many grains of sand? So it looks like it's it, it's looking at the evidence of humanity and just slapping on some la- label, oh, we're, we're reliable. Well, actually, does that constitute reliability, cognitively speaking? And is it a case of arguing from your conclusion and just saying, well, here's the conclusion and I, look, the evidence fits it? Well, actually, the evidence doesn't necessarily fit it. It can fit both conclusions that, that, that we live in a naturalistic universe or we live in a theistic universe and in fact we are at times very reliable and at times very unreliable and I know Plantinga does say that we're sufficiently reliable but but again this is clearly problematic because you know many many millions billions even people 
are believing incorrect versions of reality, whether you're a Christian, a Muslim, or an atheist, and whether, you, you know, whatever worldview you believe is correct, the majority of people on earth don't believe your worldview. So what's going on there? We all have the same evidence by and large, and yet we're all interpreting that evidence incredibly differently. So straight away, if you're looking at the most basic idea of, of the application of rationality to evidence, as far as this is an argument for theism, and yet the world's different theisms, the world's different religions, is almost proof that our cognitive faculties aren't reliable enough. At least if we, if we think that God has defined the parameters of this universe, and God has designed everything in order, one would hope, if you're a theist, to allow humans to come into a loving relationship with God, and yet most people are believing the wrong religion, or no religion at all. So I do refute this second part of the argument as being, being weak and highly debatable. I mean, I've obviously only really quickly gone over this because this wants to be a, uh, this needs to be a really quick uh, segment for the panel to get into. Next week, I'll look at the other aspects of this argument as to whether evolution and rationality are in some way incoherent, uh, and uh, and I would deny that, which is a stronger refutation of the argument. But I just wanted to play out this little bit of reliability that we are we truly reliable and exactly what does it take to allow us to label humans as sufficiently reliable as sufficiently reliable for what and is the evidence out there to support that anyway planting meh I've been uh, Jonathan MS Pierce and always remember to question everything